We know that the majority of pressure ulcers are entirely preventable. As an organisation, Pennine Acute Hospitals NHS Trust are completely committed to a zero tolerance of preventable and avoidable pressure ulcers. In the last two to three years, we as a trust have really stepped up our efforts to reduce this type of harm. We've carried out a range of measures. One thing we have witnessed over the last few years is a real change in attitude and a change in mindset of our workforce. We no longer view pressure ulcers as an inevitable outcome of being frail or unwell. Pressure ulcers, sometimes known as bed sores or pressure sores, can affect the skin and result in tissue breakdown uh, of the underlying tissues also. In more serious cases, they can affect muscle and bone. They can lead to complications, life-threatening complications, including blood poisoning and gangrene. Pressure ulcers arise from two things. Firstly, pressure, where the weight of the body presses down onto the skin. And secondly, shear, where the layers of the skin are forced to rub over one another. This typically occurs when a patient slides down the bed. Pressure ulcers are a very common and often underestimated problem. Nationally, it's thought that up to 20% of patients in hospital develop a pressure ulcer. They can cause significant pain and suffering and can also severely affect a patient's quality of life. Those patients that are more at risk of pressure ulcers include those who have problems moving and rely on others to help them move around in a bed or chair, those that cannot feel pain in part or all of their body, in other words they lack feeling or sensation, also those patients that have an underlying health condition such as poor circulation or diabetes, the very young, the very old, those that are overweight and obese and also those that are underweight or perhaps malnourished and also smokers can be at risk of pressure ulcers. The three key main signs of pressure ulcers are redness or redness that won't go away, discoloration or pain, soreness or tenderness in an area of the body. And the areas of the body that are more prone to pressure ulcers are generally those that lack uh, sufficient fatty padding for protection and those that are in contact with a support surface such as a bed or a chair. So those would include the heels, uh, the knees, the hips, the bottom of the spine, the buttocks, the shoulders and the back of the head. We also see pressure ulcers occurring from medical equipment, so we sometimes see them occurring on the nose, the mouth and the ears. We know that the majority of pressure ulcers are entirely preventable. As an organisation, Pennine Acute Hospitals NHS Trust are completely committed to a zero tolerance of preventable and avoidable pressure ulcers. In the last two to three years, we as a trust have really stepped up our efforts to reduce this type of harm. We've carried out a range of measures. One thing we have witnessed over the last few years is a real change in attitude and a change in mindset of our workforce. We no longer view pressure ulcers as an inevitable outcome of being frail or unwell. One measure that we've implemented and rolled out across the whole of our organisation is something called the Skin Bundle. Now the Skin Bundle is a, a tool which basically involves a series of healthcare interventions which we know are highly effective in preventing pressure ulcers. They're delivered in a systematic way and it includes uh, an acronym for skin. So I'll go through each element. S stands for support surface, so essentially we're responsible for providing the right equipment for our patients. That might mean um, an aid to offload pressure off the heel or a pressure relieving mattress. S also stands for skin inspection, so we train our workforce to be extra vigilant when they're looking at skin and look for those early warning signs of pressure ulcers. K, that stands for keep moving, 
So we're very, very conscious of the importance of moving our patients and repositioning when they have reduced mobility. I stands for incontinence and moisture. So we try to ensure as far as possible that our patient's skin remains clean and dry. And finally, N for nutrition and hydration. And that means that we try to ensure that our patients are given plenty of fluids and an adequate uh, dietary in intake because we know that those factors are very important in the prevention of pressure ulcers. As an organisation, we ensure that our patients and families are properly informed about their risk of pressure ulcers. And we do this in several ways. We discuss this risk openly with our patients. We also provide written information in the form of an information booklet, uh, awareness posters to uh, raise awareness to the public across our wards and departments of the risk of pressure ulcers. And we also uh, put on awareness campaigns so that we try and reach a wider audience and we educate people about the devastating consequences that can occur following the development of a pressure ulcer. So, in summary, if you are at risk of pressure ulcers or you're caring for somebody that might have a pressure ulcer or be at risk of a pressure ulcer, take action now and consult a healthcare professional. Thank you for listening. Thank you.